Hypocritic concept, my book has the highest concept. But now, I said, if I can get it from the mouth of the opposition, this testimony, then it would mean something real. Because it is natural for each individual, his religious concept to say is the highest and the best. And in this, I am going back to 1776. At a time when the whole Muslim world was down in the gutters, 1776, Edward Gibbon, the master historian, he wrote his encyclopedia called The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, 1776. And in it, his encyclopedia, he says, that the creed of Muhammad the idea, the philosophy, the principles of the teachings of this man, Muhammad وسلم, is free from the suspicions of ambiguity. And the Quran and the Quran is a glorious testimony to the unity of God. This is coming from the mouth of the Westerner, the Christian. He says that. Edward Gibbon. Ambiguity. Having more than one possible meaning to a thing. You say something, and you mean one thing, and you also mean something else. Ambiguity. You're not very clear cut. Islam, he says, the creed of Muhammad is free from that. There's no ambiguity. It's clear cut, straightforward. Anything what it says is said for what it says. It has no dual meanings. When the Christian would say, it says, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, says these three are not three, but one. Now there's ambiguity. No, Islam has no such things. To give you a crude example of ambiguity, when you use some words and you mean something else, I give an example of a lady, a lady who says that no man is good enough for her. A lady, a woman, who says no man is good enough for me, she says. So we say she may be right and she may be left. She may be right and she may be left. She may be left on the shelf. She may never get a husband. You see? But now I say she may be right and she may be left. It's got double double meaning. Can you see? Double double. That's ambiguity. In Islam, the creed of Muhammad, according to Gibbon, has no ambiguity. Clear cut, straightforward. It says one, it's one. Indivisible, indivisible. In his quality and his nature is absolutely unique. When you say he's unique, he's unique. There's nothing like him that you can think or imagine. Then, some years later, in 1854, Lamartine, a, a French historian, he wrote the history of the Turks. And the Turks, incidentally being Muslims, he started speaking about our Nabi Karim Sarasam, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, and his concept of God. And this is what he says in his book, The History of the Turks. The idea of the unity of God, proclaimed amidst the exhaustion of fabulous theologies, was in itself such a miracle that upon its utterance from his lips, it destroyed all the ancient superstitions, his endless prayers, his mystic conversations with God, his death and his triumph after death. All these attest not to an imposture, but to a firm conviction which gave him the power to restore a dogma. This dogma was twofold based on the unity of God and the immaterial, immateriality of God. His unity and He is not a material being. He is not physical. And the immateriality of God. The former telling what God is and the latter telling what God is not. What He is and what He is not. <laughs> and coming to modern days, modern times, this current, current address, His Holiness the Pope, Pope John Paul II has just published a book, written a book, called Crossing the Threshold of Hope by Pope, His Holiness Pope John Paul II. I am just inquisitive. How many of you own this book? Please put up your hand. 
If any of you, you own this book, Crossing the Threshold of Hope by Pope John Paul II. Anybody who owns this book in this hall, just put up your hand. I won't, you, I won't be asking for it. I just want to know whether you own it. Anybody, please put up your hand. Not one. You have it, sister? Good. One lady has it, Alhamdulillah. Can you imagine that in this packed hall, only one person, she has it. Are you a Muslim sister? No. You must be a Roman Catholic. No. Great. No, she is not a Roman Catholic, but she owns it. She is not a Muslim. Now, I am offering, starting with my sisters, I am offering you a hundred rounds to any of my sisters here, who at question time can give me two reasons why a Muslim is not likely to have this book. Two reasons. There are two reasons. You just give me that two, those two reasons and I'll give you a hundred rounds. Now, no, it's, it's, I'll give you a hundred rounds, just give me two reasons why a Muslim is not likely to have this book. <laughs> I have it, but I have a reason. How I got it, I was set up. I was actually set up to have this book. You know, this book here cost $59.99. If you gave 60 rounds, you get one cent change. <laughs> this is the one. 60 rounds you give for this, you get this one cent change. You know how valuable this is in comparison. I am offering you this book here. Look, gold embossed. Hardcover, gold embossed. Silk paper, silk paper. I give you 12 of this for this one. For the price of this one. For 60 rands, I give you 12 of these books. 12 of these books for 60 rands. And I'll give you that one cent change if you want it. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'll give you that one cent. If you want that one cent change, I'll give you that one cent change. 60 rands for 12. So, but I found something wonderful in this book. A jewel. On page 92. Page 92 of the Pope's book. This book has become a bestseller today. In America, within weeks of its publication, they sold 1.6 million. 1 million and 600,000 of these were sold within weeks. It's the world's bestseller today. 59.99. On page 92, His Holiness the Pope, he says, some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Qur'an. No, Allah, we Muslims should kiss his hands. You know that? Some of the most beautiful names in the human language, which includes his Bible, in the human language there is nothing in any world scripture to his knowledge. Maybe if Swami was here, he might have said, no, also in my book, also something better, superior to what you are saying. It, it's possible, it's possible. But now the Pope says, in the human language, in his experience, there's nothing like what is in the Quran. Some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. He must have read it. He must have read the Quran or somebody told him. And the Tari was confirming it, his statement. Some of the verses which he read, beautiful, beautiful, like the voice from heaven, Alhamdulillah. I'm quoting from Surah Hashr. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Huwa Allahu al-Ladhi la ilaha illa huwa. 